G'day everyone. Today we've got a competition on. So we need some votes. So please check out the, the link in the description below. It'll take you through to a Facebook page. I'd really appreciate to leave your uh, comments below. I do read them all. I really do appreciate them. Even the nasty ones, whatever. Um, but today we've got a competition on. So Medieval Mayhem uh, with, a, with another medieval channel called The Bearded Axe. And the challenge was who could come up with a flagpole the best. So this is my effort. Please, uh, please watch the video and then check out Brian's video for the bearded axe. I'd love to see what he's come up with and I'd love to hear your feedback. I really, really would. Okay, let's get into it. the first thing that I needed today was a banner. I've been wanting to make one of these for a little over a year now and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make this. Radio. A couple of quick points. This is made of cotton. It's not medieval. Medieval would have been linen. I just needed something which was going to work for this. So this is not kind of historically authentic as such. Okay, uh, next point I would suggest if you're going to do something like this, wash your fabric first let it air dry on the line. That helps to set the uh, dyes and to uh, avoid any fabric leakage. All right, let's get into making our banner. Okay guys, our banner's done. Now we're gonna do is make a flagpole. I'm making this out of 15 centimeter wide, uh, roughly speaking, radiata pine. That is six inch wide. Now, uh, we'll just take a quick look at this. Goodness me, it's a really hot day here in Brisbane and I reckon it's spring, it's more like 30 degrees and that's Celsius by the way for my American viewers. <sighs> okay, so we're going to put a red trim around the outside of the banner and then we're going to do the, I guess, and I'm not sure the terminology for it, some of you may know. I will then be putting on the um, piece at the top where that kind of fits into the flagpole. Very excited about this. This has been a lot of fun. Really looking forward to sort of seeing where this can go. So if you have a, um, a channel that does medieval stuff or, or LARP stuff or whatever, by all means, I'm, I'm up for a challenge. Not exactly sure why I don't like to use pins. Maybe I've stabbed myself too many times. It's not hard. You're just folding the, the red fabric into four. Machine siren's about as easy as it gets. For me.
literally literally just been working on this for about 10 minutes and we're already halfway done this is such a great project to do lots of fun come on Brian you can do some sewing too well it looks a bit complicated I know there's some holes and whatnot it's all gonna work out it's all gonna be pretty cool and it's all pretty straightforward actually so uh, let's uh, let's get a bit more sewing done So pretty much we've just cut some windows into the fabric and what that's doing is just allowing us to create these holes which will still have a seam around the outside. Alright, let's take a look at what we got. Alright, so we got the banner, yeah, uh, with a nice red trim around the outside. At some stage I'll put a wyvern in the middle. That is the dragon that you might have seen on my shield. And then we've also got uh, this, this section here. So this is what we've just made, right? So now what we'll do is just fold this over. And you can see that you've now got the place to put the rail so this hangs off the flagpole. All right, let's get this put on and then we'll make the flagpole. Going really well, it hasn't taken long at all, didn't think it would. So pretty happy with this. I do strongly suggest you use pins. I don't, I just sort of struggle with them. I don't know why. Just kind of a weird habit that I put myself into. I should, I completely acknowledge that I should use pins, but I don't. Depending on how you're going to use your your banner or your flag, uh, I would recommend reinforcing it with the second row of stitches. I use um, a fairly heavy duty cotton thread in this case. Uh, I usually use linen threads, depends what I'm making. Um, but if it's going to be indoor use, it doesn't matter quite as much. And if it's going to be historical, you may want to consider sort of how you make it to make sure that it complies with your group's uh, authenticity guide. But that just depends on whether you're into uh, live action role play or whether it's the SCA or whether it's um, medieval reenactment that you've got yourself into. Alright, you can't see too much at the moment, uh, but this is pretty much how, how well this has worked. Hopefully you can get a bit of view on that. Um, so really happy with this. This will be in, for indoor use. So we're really quite excited about how this is working out. Uh, let's go make the flagpole. I want that finished today and then uh, we'll have a look at everything put together. Really looking forward to this. This has been a lot of fun. Any kind of woodworking project like this, you really do need the correct PPE on that is personal protective equipment. That is glasses, a mask, and ear defenders.
I'll just use some sicker flex now, just some white glue. Start putting this together. So we we'll just put the base sections together. I'll give this a sand in the morning. Starting to lose the light now, so. Just gonna put this on and then leave it to dry pretty much. See how that works out. So as you might be able to see the flagpole come through here. This all needs to get sanded off in the morning, that's fine. Otherwise it's starting to look pretty good. Definitely leaving it there now, just to dry off, sand it back, give it a coat of varnish, all finished, all done. This has come out really, really, really well. So happy with this, it's not funny. Um, now we're simply gonna hit it with the sander, uh, put some varnish on. The idea of this was cheap, simple, easy to produce. I'm falling over here. <laughs> um, and just a bit of fun really between uh, Brian and myself. So I'm going to hit this with the sand, get some varnish on and then we'll just finish off with the um, flagpole itself. <laughs> I'm just going to do a quick clove hitch around here. Sorry about the background noise, I live in suburbia, I can't control it. There we go. Around a few times. I'm not doing this precisely, this is not load bearing or structural really. The weight is actually being held by the other piece of twine. So. For dimensions, this is 15 centimetres square at the top. Now the holes come out slightly off centre, that's no big deal. So that's roughly six, uh, six inches, right? 15 centimetres square. These are 30 centimetres long and the overall width is 60 centimetres long. There we go. I now have used a piece of Tasmanian oak for my dowel. There we go. Uh, it's pretty simple, that was the challenge really, just to use some simple everyday tools and a single piece of pine and see what we can come up with. What I needed was something I can take to reenactment events, something I can, uh, can use for education tours and all that kind of thing. And so there we go, that's what we've got. Rightio guys, all finished, all done. So, so happy with this. This has cost me probably about $30 for the fabric. 
for the banner and it took me probably a little over an hour to make. Honestly, that simple. Uh, so if you're interested in making a flag or a banner for your LARP or your SCA group or perhaps your medieval reenactment group, this is something that's really simple, very easy to do, simple weekend project, that kind of thing. The piece of dowel was around about, I don't know, $20 or so. This one was about $5 for the crossbeam. And the actual pine that I used for the base plate was around about $20. So keeping pretty much, I felt, to a, to a reasonable budget. Um, this is a really good piece of kit. It's come out very well, very sturdy, very simple, but very effective. And so that's exactly really what I was chasing. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share. So many more videos coming up. I really hope you enjoy them. Uh, please leave a comment. I'd really appreciate it. I do read your feedback, and it's very important to me. Righto, guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in my next video.